Thanks so much for your engagement over the past couple of weeks. Uh, got a huge response to the Business Cases Suck video, which was really interesting. That one obviously struck a nerve for people. Uh, and I thought what I would do is share a little bit more of the backstory around how I learned that, how I learned to work with uh, some of those tools and techniques that I shared a couple of weeks back on the blog for you. Um, in the hope that that might just give you a bit more context about why it is that I use those techniques and why I choose to go there. So. Um, we're going to roll back the clock a few years now, but uh, when we, when I first started working with teams to try and implement agile software delivery and what I would now call a broader business agility approach, what happened was uh, we were, I was working with a team and um, we started off with a team of 20 people. None of us had ever done this agile thing before. Uh, we had a coach set up with us and really we were given, uh, I guess, kind of free reign, like whatever you need to make this work, this is a big experiment, go for gold. Uh, and, and so this team of 20 people, um, myself included, embarked on this journey of how do we make this work in a big corporate? How do we make this work in a large organization? We're not a startup, we're an old school corporate, we've got a long history, a uh, bit like the Titanic, <laughs> it's a giant boat and it takes a long time to try and steer change. We're talking multi-thousand seat organization. And so we found ourselves in this position of going, okay, right, how are we going to do this? And um, and so we went through that process of, at that point, I was a project manager uh, and, and it was sort of, I was given this project and I was going to be the, the manager for the job. Uh, and we went through this process of the team learning how to work in a more responsive way. So trying to stop doing projects that took two, three years to implement a piece of software. Uh, you know, you get to the end of that two to three year period, you spent all this time and effort and the pace of change that the, by the time you actually finish the job, then it's almost, it's almost at the point where nobody cares anymore. You know, the customers have moved on, the business has moved on. Uh, and you don't necessarily get the full impact that you would have had if you could have implemented at the time that somebody first had the idea. So we we're moving from this place of big, long projects that take a long time, cost a lot of money, takes a lot of time to change the IT, into a way of working that said, let's deliver more value more often. Let's try and break work down into small chunks. Let's try and learn from the work that we're doing, get that feedback, uh, and at the same time, shoot for a bigger outcome too, right? Like we don't want to lose sight of the big picture. And so this team went, we, we went on this journey and uh, to start with, we focused a lot on the team dynamics. So what were the rituals around getting everybody together at the start of the day and saying, hey, what are we working on? What did we learn yesterday? What are we working on today? How do you want to roll this through? We focused a lot around the two week sprint methodology. Um, one thing I'm super grateful for is that our coach at the time never kind of taught us what flavor of agile we were we were working with. Uh, we always had that opportunity to say, hey, we've seen something, should we try this? Let's see if it works. Uh, so we went we went through this process of focusing a lot on team structure, team dynamics, like team working practices. And that was all well and good. We did that for probably 12, 18 months. And then at, at this point, we, we said, hey, this is something's working here. Let's try and make it bigger. And so we started to scale those practices out across the whole of the business unit. And at that time, there were roughly 200 people that were working in this particular particular business unit. Uh, and so we scaled those practices out and we said, how do we take this wider? How do we, how do we make this bigger than ourselves? So we grew that team, uh, a little bit of organic growth through adding to my project and a little bit of actually we're going to target other projects and other teams that are all within this one business unit and we're all going to start working this way and we learned a whole bunch at that point around portfolios structuring uh, capital works programs you know, how do you get some of that organization stuff happening at scale um, and so that was a great learning point but then after about six months of that we realized that that wasn't our biggest roadblock what had become our biggest roadblock was that once you teach teams to work this way, once you teach people how to how to operate in this manner, how to, how to become more flexible and agile, once they start to take to that, your biggest hurdle is actually not the IT department, it's the entire rest of the organization around them. And so then we were presented with this problem where we said, right, well, to make this bigger, for us to be effective, for us to bring our business stakeholders on board, for us to bring, bring our project owners into the mix, for us to start to really change the organization as a whole and get past a lot of these hurdles that we're seeing where 
every time we go outside our own business unit, it's like speaking a foreign language. How do we, how do we get past some of those hurdles? Well, actually, we're going to have to start to look at what does it mean to apply these business agility principles across a wider organization? And so at that point, we started going after the money. Because what we figured was that if you went for the money, then that way you could be driving this conversation and this way of working across every project that had to go through that process of requesting money. So we went after the business case process. We went into the rolling wave planning and the quarterly funding requests, all that stuff that I talked about in the in the video a couple of weeks ago and the micro training that I put together. So we went after the money because we figured if we can change the way that the organization makes investment decisions, then we have some ability to influence not only what the money is being spent on, uh, but the way that it's being spent, the structure around the program. We can start to influence setting a vision that's got some customer intent and some data behind it. We can start to influence breaking work down into small chunks. If we can get that finance team on, on side, that investment decision-making team on side, that's when we'll really start to get some traction because then all of these projects will start to work in this way. And so that's where a lot of those tools and techniques came out of, was the understanding that once we'd built that team, once we'd gone through that, uh, I guess, that, that more local version of uh, change and adoption of agile software delivery techniques, we then needed to go bigger picture and go, what does it look like to spread this across the whole organization? And we realized that if we could influence the investment decision-making team, we could influence the entire capital portfolio. And that was a significant portion of the money that was being spent in the business. So that was, that was how we got there. And then what was really interesting was that a number of years later, I was in an organization and we were working on a, uh, a, a transformation piece for them around you know, where do we want to go first to try and get improvement. And this particular IT team, what we chose to do, instead of focusing on the team structure and the techniques, they already kind of had a little bit of a model for some of the stuff going on. They'd already set up a digital team. They had this cross-functional thing sort of happening in one pocket of their organization. And what happened was when we did the initial sort of stakeholder briefing around, okay, how do we want to change this organization? We lucked out and had a finance person, head of finance for IT, that happened to be in the conversation. And she took one look at what we were trying to do around business agility and she went, I'm in. And so what we did with that organization was instead of going through all of that process of changing the, the way that the teams were working first, we went straight for the money. We went straight for the investment decision making and we took those learnings that we'd had from that past program around breaking work down into small chunks, the types of questions that you ask around the impact that you're going to have, how you set those projects up to be successful, what it looks like to manage a capital portfolio using these business agility principles. And we actually just kind of crammed that into an existing process. And the beauty was that we learned that these techniques work equally well, whether you're in a new kind of greenfield, more of a startup environment, where you have got that free reign to try things and to do things differently. It worked equally well when actually you were trying to drive change within a business, but you had that framework and that structure that you still had to work within. We, we chose not to change. In that second example, we chose not to change the business case process um, the funding request process, we chose not to change any of that, but to actually take what we'd learned around the types of questions to ask and, and feed that into the existing framework. And so what that ended up looking like was that instead of doing a prep kind of scoping meeting and then a business case approval meeting and then regular check-ins throughout the project and a closure meeting, instead of taking that process and trying to bust it up, what we did was we changed the questions that were asked at each step of the way. And because we had that finance person on side who got it right from the get-go, then what it meant was that we started by changing the business case process. And so that initial prep and scope meeting became a question of, what's the smallest thing that we can do to understand whether or not our idea is going to have impact? And let me give you a small chunk of money to go and experiment with that and to learn from it and to come back with a bit of a prototype. And that second meeting which used to be the whole business case, NPV, benefits, setting all that up, 
we change the questioning in there around how do you know? What's the prototype look like? What's the impact on customers? What data do you have to demonstrate that? And so that business case process became much more around setting up, this is the outcome that we're going to, that we want to achieve. Here's the prototype that we've done, that demonstration that our idea is going to have a significant impact for our customers. And within that big vision, here are the next few steps we know. Here is the work broken down into small chunks, and this is the funding that we need for those small chunks. We're after the first piece, and we'll come back to you throughout the process through that quarterly funding request to come back and, re and, and request the next drawdown of funds for that project. And then that reflection piece at the end, instead of, instead of sort of waiting right to the end to do our, our reflection, actually that reflection process got brought forward and we would do that as part of the project as we went. And so we got into that rhythm of rolling wave planning, quarterly funding requests, constant review and opening up of new work, closing off of old work. And it meant that whole financial process, being able to change that because we had that one finance person on board, it meant that we we were then driving change across the whole rest of the business outside of the initial IT department because we were setting that example of here's how we start to do incremental delivery. We went for the money first and then from that point we drove change throughout the rest of the business because everybody started to sort of come into and conform to this process. And then your delivery and the, the fact that you're actually able to deliver, you're actually able to get impact, you start to see benefits early, you start to see customer value delivered early, all of that just speaks for itself. And all of a sudden you start to build this momentum as more and more people want to get on board with your process. So I hope that was useful. I wanted to share a little bit of that backstory because I think sometimes I have a tendency to skip over some of that context and maybe there's some learnings in there for you around how to approach this type of change, particularly if you're in one part of the organization and you find yourself bumping up against other parts of the organization and you think, how do I start to have influence across that broader group? If it may, it may be just outside of your current scope of practice, but you want to start engaging your peers and your colleagues in these conversations, I want to give you that context and that's share a bit of that backstory uh, in case you've got any nuggets that you can take from that and learn and apply for yourself. So I hope that was useful. Uh, if it was, hit me up with a comment. I always love to hear from you. Hit me up with a DM, hit me up with an email. I'm always curious to hear what's resonating for you, uh, what's working for you, and I will go deeper on any of those topics if you just let me know what you want to hear more of. So I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day, and I will see you again next week.